Today's video is on how to make one of these ordinary jewel thieves with a toroid. I've got a video on how to make one without a toroid, but uh, never made one uh, like this. So I thought it's about time to do that, and we'll uh, show you how to wind the coil, how things are connected, and give you a parts list and all that, and you should be able to make one on your own. If we have time, I'll show you how to make one with a bigger one, and uh, otherwise we'll have to save that for another day. Okay, let's get started. Our parts list include a transistor. This is a 2N2222. It's an equivalent, actually, but it's the same thing. Uh, it's a NPN transistor. That's very important. Uh, you have to have an NPN transistor. This has an HFE, which is a amplification, an amplification of about 100. And you need an amplification over 35 or it won't work. Okay, so that's the transistor. We need an LED, and this LED has to be a low voltage LED. Some of them are rather high. They won't turn on until like 3 or 4 volts. This is uh, one that turns on somewhere around 1.3, 1.4 volts, something like that. So you need a low voltage LED. We're going to need a 1K ohm resistor, um, and this is to protect the base from over voltage. A small one works. You don't need a really big one. We're also going to need a toroid, and as you can see, they come in many different sizes and colors. The color indicates the speed of the toroid, the frequency at which it likes to operate. And you're better off with a lower frequency toroid, like this one over here, which is five, no, 50 to 500 kilohertz. It uh, will work a lot more easily. If you get one that's a really high frequency, it'll either be very inefficient or you'll have trouble getting it to oscillate, and yeah, you'll not be happy with the results. You can pull them out of stuff. So, for example, I've got this one here where uh, you can see I've, I've added my own wires around it, and it used to have it used to be sitting on a plate like this one. I took it off, and those are the two legs over here where my right hand is, and then I wrapped my own uh, windings around it and used it that way. Uh, I just prefer one of these little toroids. I think I got it at some electronics shop by the bag uh, many years ago. But it's a low frequency uh, black toroid. And this is what I found works the best for these smaller ones. This is the small coil. And as you can see, the red wire, which is the positive from the battery, attaches to the brown wire. And the brown wire goes around here 11 times. And it was put on after the blue wire. The blue wire was wrapped 22 times, so there's a ratio of of one to two, but you need a minimum number of wrappings. You can't put on one wrapping of one and one and two on the other and have it work. It won't do that way. No, it does not happen. So I put on 22 of the blue wrappings and then I put on uh, 11 of the brown wrappings. The collector over here, you'll notice that one end of the blue wire and one end of the brown wire are both attached to the collector. Yes, and the other end of the blue wire is over here on the base and then the other end of the brown wire again is the red wire, it's from the battery. So that's how the coil works. So let's go wrap one and go from there. We'll wrap it using uh, two pieces of wire. This I found this is a little bit easier for wrapping, but uh, I'm going to pull off about a foot of wire and I'm just going to start wrapping it through here and I keep count of the, of the turns. There's one. Two, keep it tight, three, what happens if I run short? I just go from the other end, and we don't want kinks, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, so there's eleven, so 
So what I'm going to have to do, I could unwrap all this and pull more wire, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to give myself a lot of wire on the other end. Cut it off. And start wrapping from that direction. 11. Thirteen. What happens if I don't come up with the right amount? Eh, as long as the ratio is the same, it will probably work okay. Fourteen. I'm getting a little sloppy here. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Again, I'm letting my coils get too get too loose. I keep them tight on the keep them tight on the coil without like rubbing through the plastic or the insulation. I lost count. I think I was 18. 19. 20. 21. And 22. Okay, not my most beautiful coil, but good enough. Uh, I'll go clean it up a little bit, and then we'll put the second layer on there. Okay, I went back and cleaned it up a little bit. I still got some lumpiness in here, but it's a lot better than it was. A little bit tighter. I went back and unwrapped it and tightened it up a little bit. So there it is. Now let's put the second layer on there, and I'll use a different color wire so you can see that. But uh, this is approximately 22 turns, and we'll put another 11 turns on the outside of it, so we'll get a ratio of 1 to 2. So what I've done is I've cut another piece of red wire, and I'm just going to wrap it through here. I'm not going to I'm not going to make you suffer through watching me uh, wrap it again. We'll just I'll go off and do that. I'll be right back, and I'll show you the result. And here we are back again. You'll notice that the ratio is about two to one, and there should be about roughly two windings in between, two blue windings in between each red winding, and it roughly is. And I've got them tied off so they won't unravel on me. But uh, that's it for the, the coil. The first thing I recommend doing is getting all your components together, get your coil wound, and what we're going to do is we're going to assemble some sub pieces and before we put the coil on there because uh, I have found that the coil sometimes is a little bit fussy about how, which of the red leads you pair with which of the blue leads. So what I'm going to do is I'll solder the LED onto the transistor, I'll solder the resistor on there, but I'm going to leave the coil for the last. Uh, and we'll do that with some alligator clips first to test it, make sure it's working. One of the things I do to ensure that I get this right is that I test the LED with a battery and I mark, you can see I put a black mark right there, I mark the LED, the negative lead, so that I don't make the mistake when I solder it onto the transistor and I get it on the wrong side. Um, let me show you a close-up of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the leads on the LED. You can see that they bend here, so they go around here nicely. And then I'm going to wire wrap them onto the leads of the transistor. And yeah, that'll be the first step in assembly. And then I will solder those on there. And then I will probably go ahead and solder the uh, resistor onto the base. And yeah, at that point again, I'm going to leave the coil so that I can kind of do a trial and error to make sure that I get the right leads connected to the to the right leads on the transistor. Okay, let me go do that. I'll be right back. So what I've done is I have bent the legs on the LED so that they make a little chair. And I'm going to set the transistor in there like that. I'm going to wire wrap these together which will give me my mechanical connection for good soldering. I'll solder them together 
and then I will come back and I will show you that but it should sit in there it should make like a nice little chair and it should sit in there like that so here I have it wired in place so I can easily solder it and you can see it's not going to come loose uh, going to do the same thing with the resistor get it on there somehow and wire it up I've wired on the resistor now as well and I will go solder this and then we will do trial and error on the coil to see uh, which configuration works the best. And there she is all soldered up. Okay, let's look and see what we're going to do. We know this one works. So you can see that this uh, reddish colored wire is paired with a blue wire and it attaches to the collector right there. It's, uh, this is the flat side up. So, if it doesn't work well, what I found is I will switch, say, this blue wire with this blue wire over here, leaving the same red wire in place. So, I'm just going to switch this end with this end, and I found a lot of times that that will uh, cause it to work. So, yeah, it is sensitive as to which uh, wire it's paired with, which of the two ends it's paired with. Okay, so let's go give that a try. I've got everything twisted together. This is twisted on here. Everything's twisted together. Okay, I've got my dead battery out of my dead battery collection. So I need to cut the red wire over here. There we go. And then touch the black wire to the emitter. And yes, there we are. So, yep. Okay, it's working. If it was not working, what I would do is I would switch this blue wire and this blue wire and then try it again. Okay, let's go finalize this. I wired some a red and black lead on it. The black lead goes to the emitter. And I soldered up all the other connections. And as you can see, I've got her hooked to our dead battery. And there she is. Okay, well that was it. Start to finish, Jewel Thief. Hope you found it useful and interesting in your electronic experiments.